I present to you Al. He's always wanted to learn how to surf, and it looks like he's ready to do some serious surfing. He's got his swimming trunks, surfer hat, shades, suntan lotion on his nose, and surfboard. He's good to go. Wait a minute, Al, what are you doing? Surfing, well, yes, I can see that you're standing on the surfboard and that you've got your hands stretched out for balance. But Al, you're still on the beach. Al, don't get mad. What's with kicking sand on your surfboard? Don't go away mad. Al, well, that didn't work very well. We're here tonight to talk about the future of our congregation. We're excited about the possibilities. Children and adults passionate about Jesus. Opportunities to make a real difference in our world. A church home that launches us out into our world with some really good news about Jesus. But what does all this have to do with surfing? Both surfing and the work of the church require a powerful outside force to make it all happen. For surfing, it's the wave. For the church, it is God. We remember the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus asked his disciples to feed a large crowd of people, but the disciples couldn't do it. They asked, what can we do with five barley loaves and two fish? But Jesus took what they had, blessed it, and fed all the people. They had 12 baskets full of bread left over. On another occasion, the disciples had been fishing all night but caught nothing. Jesus told them to drop their nets and try again. The disciples protested, We worked all night long but have caught nothing. But they obeyed Jesus. They caught so many fish that their nets began to break. Fifty days after Easter on the first Pentecost, Peter preached to the crowds in Jerusalem. On that day alone, 3,000 people came to faith. We read in the book of Acts that the church grew not because of anything the disciples did, but because day by day the Lord added to their number. If we look at the church throughout history, if we look at our own congregation, we would say the same thing. It is the Lord who adds to our numbers and makes things happen. The church is different than every other organization you know. Work, school, PTA, Boy Scouts. In the church, we don't make things happen. God does. To ignore this simple fact is like trying to surf without getting out into the waves. As we begin to think about the future of our congregation, we must begin by asking ourselves the question, what is God doing at Gloria Day? Where is the next wave? Are we ready to catch the wave of God's dream? You're back, Al. Good for you. And you're out in the water where you need to be. What are you doing now, Al? You're going in circles. Look out! Okay, Al, you've got another chance. Pay attention. Uh, get your board pointing in the right direction. Al, look out! That's the spirit, Al. Back on the board again. And you are finally facing the right direction. Aha! You did it! You caught the wave. Al, you're surfing. We're proud of you, Al. Al, be careful. Watch what you're doing, Al. Oh, sorry, Al. If we compare life in the church to surfing, it is not enough to just be out in the water. We have to be working with the wave. So too in the church. It is not enough to say God is active in the church. We need to be sure that we are working with God. We can probably all think of times when work in the church was really difficult, exhausting 
like swimming against a powerful wave. We may have made up our minds which direction we wanted to go and have not been as attentive to what God was doing. These attempts at ministry can be frustrating. Then there have been times when ministry seems so easy. It just flowed. We didn't always understand why we were successful. We just were. Looking back, we can now see that we were working with the wave. In the past few years, we might think of several examples of catching the wave. Water's Edge is definitely a wave from God. It is not our doing. We simply joined God. Wednesday worship has gone from 30 to 180. Bible classes for children, youth, and adults have seen a similar growth. It's all a powerful wave from God. Earlier this year, we purchased two lots adjacent to our church. It's a complicated story. We did not start this process thinking that we would buy either of these right now. But as it turned out, these were the lots we really needed. God opened doors. Things happened. It was another wave from God that we simply joined. Last spring, we experimented with our Sunday school in worship for half of the time. We thought this might be a wave, but as we watched, we learned a lot and decided that this was not a wave. That too was part of this process, learning what is and what is not a wave. As we make plans for our future, we begin to look for that big wave that will help us define the future of our entire ministry. That's what we're doing tonight, catching the wave of God's dream. That's what I like about you, Al. You are not a quitter. You're out on the water. You're pointed in the right direction. And now, you're waiting for that big wave. What are you doing? You're hungry. I don't know if that's a good idea. Don't you think you ought to pay attention to the waves? Oh, sorry, Al. That's the spirit, Al. Try, try, try again. What are you looking for? The banana? No, for forget about the banana. Look out for the next wave. Too late. Boy, this surfing business is much harder than it looks. Hi everyone, my name's Shane Baker, a member in good standing here at Glory Day Lutheran Church, and I hope I still will be after tonight. We've been talking about catching the wave and learning where God's leading our congregation. Tonight we're gonna try a, an experiment and ask the same question to different generations and find out who we are. Come with me while I ask my questions. What would you say is your favorite religious song? A uh, favorite religious song has to be Gloria Patri, a song I sang in my choir two years back, and it's in Latin, but uh, I just felt really connected to it because of uh, like the feeling that many other people have sung it before me. Above all, I like that one. You want to give us a couple? Um, no, that's okay. That's okay. No, I don't. You wouldn't recognize it if I did it. Probably Silent Night, I would have to say. Uh, anything from the contemporary service? I'm a little bit more contemporary than uh, than hymns, so. Yeah, I don't really think too much about songs. Uh, you, you know, like when I was young, the two favorite songs, probably the favorite one was Onward Christian Soldiers. And uh, you know, that was back in the mid 50s. And uh, boy, we sang that a lot in Sunday school. And some days when I don't know what to do with something, I go to Precious Lord, Take My Hand. On Eagle's Wings. We had that at our wedding and hope someday to have it at my funeral. But, and I also love Amazing Grace. Dale? Uh, on Eagle's Wings is, as well. But I also, during the Easter time, I just love to hear uh, the Hallelujah verse. Good, good job throwing in Eagle's Wings, kind of brownie points there. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Well done. Smooth. Smooth. Eagle's Wings is my favorite, too. Good. Good answer. Do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was attacked? Well, I wasn't born. I was not born yet. 1940, 39, 41, somewhere in there. We're going to go with 41. All right, 41. With my father and my mother. It was on a Sunday. And we just could not believe what was happening when we, it came over on the radio. I wasn't born? When the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan, 
No, I wish I was here though. Love the Beatles. We were at home watching television and my son Peter came in and he said, you've got to watch this show because the Beatles are coming in. We watched them. Uh, on the floor in front of a black and white TV, and I was very young, but I do remember it. When we first landed on the moon. Mm -hmm. Very vividly. I was at my Aunt Jerry's house, lives in Cannon Falls, Minnesota, on a farm, and I was sitting in front of the television eating a container of Cool Whip. I probably was teaching school, and we had to sort of follow that with our children. Where who was? Me. Where, where were you <laughs> when we first landed on the moon? It was still not around. It wasn't there yet. When you found out that the Trade Center had been attacked on 9-11? Yeah, I was getting ready for work. And I had the TV on in the bedroom. Oh, definitely. Um, I was at my house, actually, uh, getting ready for a violin lesson. I was at home that morning. I had not left for anything yet, and I could not believe what was... I turned on the television, and I could not believe what was happening. Eddie, have you ever Googled yourself? Maybe. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. No, I, <laughs> I don't... I get on the Google, but not for me. Well, I was actually Googling uh, one of my daughter's dates for one of their dances to want to find out more about the family. And I thought, hey, I wonder where, where, if I'm in here at all, <laughs> if somebody were to Google me. That's embarrassing. <laughs> but true. Ariel, Amy's friends, beware. <laughs> beware, you're being Googled now. <laughs> I'm dangerous at the Google bar. <laughs> When's the last time you texted someone? When will be the first time I text someone? <laughs> I don't have texting on my plan, so I don't ever text anyone. <laughs> We're too cheap. Like five minutes ago. <laughs> Quite a while ago, and I think the only person I really text is my daughter, because sometimes that's the only way that I can get through to her. She won't answer her phone, but she will answer a text. Have you ever Skyped someone? No. <laughs> Would you like it if someone Skyped you? I'm not sure that you can tell I don't know some of these terms too well. Yeah, I have uh, relatives in Brazil, and so we talk all the time over Skype. So you would say you're an experienced Skyper? I guess so, <laughs> if that's the term. <laughs> you know, I know how to do it, but my daughter basically tells me what to do so I can get it going. I mean, like if someone said to me, you go out there and, and set it up, I probably would have a little bit of trouble, but that's, that's something we do. Sorry, I stopped listening when I heard you say, my daughter just tells me what to do. I just stopped listening. So. Yeah. <laughs> you wait, you got two girls, you'll find out. Where did Hoss, Adam, and little Joe live? On the Ponderosa. Um, I, I have no idea. Sad. Did you have a particular favorite, Hoss, Adam, or little Joe? Oh, I liked Hoss. A fiery horse with the speed of light a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver. Oh, the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger rides again. And who's the Lone Ranger's partner? Tonto. The Lone Ranger. You are culturally competent in many ways. Um, the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. And, and Tonto. Tonto. And Tonto. Tonto. Yeah. I feel like I should know this one, but I don't. Don't sit under the apple tree. With anyone else but me. You might get hit in the head with an apple. I don't know. Is that a song? Because there's gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's gravity. I think that, yes, that's the second verse. I just didn't remember that one. K -k -k Katie, beautiful Katie, you're the only person. I've got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're the only one that I can ever love. M I C. See you real soon. K E Y. <laughs> M O U S E, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Donald Duck. Mickey Mouse. Donald Duck. That's Mickey Mouse. Hey, do you know Jenny's phone number? Oh, uh, 267 5309. 267 5309. Close. You'll get a wrong number and somebody will be mad at you. Good job. <laughs> 867 5309. Well done. Jenny's? Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. 
You blow my mind, oh Mickey. You blow my mind. Well done. I don't know where you're coming up with these, but it's not in my vocabulary. Digging deeper into the history vaults, Mary, who is this pastor? Well, Pastor Bourbon. He was the tall pastor that really did a lot for our church, and we enjoyed him. He basically recruited us for Gloria Day. He did an excellent job. He stopped at our house. He was a great person at persuading people to join Gloria Day, I think. I think the church grew considerably during his time. I was baptized at this church, so I should know that, but I don't remember his name. I Sorry. I his last name starts with a B. Not Bourbon. Is it Pastor Bourbon? Is it? Yes, That's right. who baptized me. Yeah. I think a previous pastor here at Glory Day, but we weren't here at the time. Was it the pastor shirt that gave away he was a pastor? Probably, but also the haircut. The pastor haircut. <laughs> the, it's pretty 60s mm-hmm. or 50s or 70s. Depends. <laughs> Never mind. Famous Minnesotan, does he look familiar to you? Oh, Kirby. If I said he was the round mound of ribbies. Oh, yeah, Kirby, yeah. I recognize Kirby. That, that, that's more what I would recognize, yes. The twins with... The twins uh, uniform kind of gave it away. Gotcha. There. I love that slam dunk that he did yeah. in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Wasn't that great? <laughs> yeah, you're sports fan, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Do you recognize her? That'd be Cindy Lauper. And can you think of any Cindy Lauper songs off the top of your head? All I'm aware of is that girls would like to have fun. A lot of it. That looks like Chris back in the 80s. <laughs> I don't recognize her either. You're getting people from other generations than what I'm used to. Madonna? Who is this young lady? Miley Cyrus. Well done. Also known as? Hannah Montana. You notice I don't follow these young singers and actors too well. It's all right. That's all right. I wish my daughter didn't follow that one as much myself. Very good looking young lady, but I don't recognize her. You get the best of both worlds. And do we have any idea who this young man might be? Mm-hmm. John Boy. John Boy Walton. John Walton, yes. We used to watch the Waltons. You're getting kind of tricky on here now. I, that's my aim. He's John Boy from that uh, one of those shows. Okay, everybody out there, good night. What is the best thing we do here at Gloria Day? I think the children's ministry is the best thing that we do. My kids love going to church and more than I ever did at their age. So I think that that's a wonderful thing this church does. And I would add that uh, um, trying to be open to everybody's needs, um, having the variety of services. And also when we first came here, the just the welcoming atmosphere was something that really attracted us to Gloria Day. I'm proud of because I was involved in it um, as we were doing some changing, and, and that's the youth, how we deal with, with youth. You know, and if, if you look at uh, the average age of most churches, I mean, we're considerably younger than, than most churches, and, that, and that's a great thing. I think that's the thing I'm probably the most proud of. Definitely the edge. Um, I love being there with my friends and being able to get closer to God in a, in a community, uh, and it's a very close group of people and uh, I know everyone, everyone knows each other and so it's a safe and secure place where you can share your feelings. I think being a community of believers is so good. I come into the church and I really feel at home that we are all Christians and believe in each other and have God as our guide for everything. It's a very welcoming church. I mean it makes everybody feel welcome regardless of their background or other churches that they came from. That's what appealed to me most about it. I really like our Wednesday night programming when we don't have interviews. (laughs) 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 In a lighthearted way, we've tried to show you how different the generations are. Though united by our relationship to Jesus, generationally, we're very different. Our next big wave may be the church taking these generational differences to heart and planning ministries that specifically address the needs of each generation. Well, after all those mistakes, Al, it looks like you finally got it. You're really surfing 
Wow, look at you go. You make it look so easy. Going back for another try? Yes, I can see that you really enjoy surfing. What's that? You want us to join you? I don't know. Do you think that we really can? Is generational thinking the wave of God that we need to catch at Gloria Day? Should our ministries and programs, even our organizational structure, be examined to ensure that each generation can meaningfully encounter Jesus? This is a time like no other in our history. Things are changing, changing dramatically. We may need to step out to make some changes of our own, to try again and again, learning from our past efforts and building on the efforts of those who have come before us. And now we invite you to join us in this process. Over the next few months, we will talk, pray, try things out, fail, learn from our mistakes, and try again. In the next few months, we invite you to take an active part in catching the wave of God's dream. Join us as we catch the wave of God's dream. Join us. Join us. Join us. Catch the wave. Catch the wave of God's dream. Catch the wave of God's dream. Join, Join us. us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Catch the wave of God's dream. Join us. Catch the wave of God's dream. Join us. Join us. Catch the wave of God's dream.